So the next thing we'll go ahead and do is install our top cover assembly with needle valve and float. First thing we need to do is just grab our top cover, needle valve, body and gasket and they're simply going to go together and in that goes. Uh, you'll find that the DCOE needle valves take a 10mm spanner. Got one of these. Just get that reasonably. Oh, put on a few more. Okay, it's done. Just, just turn that off a little bit. Done. In goes the needle. On goes our top cover gasket. Next is the float. So what we do is it'll just hold it in between like that, between the prongs. We want to insert the pin from the split side. Don't be too rough. You can break those pins off. So we'll just get it started. And what I'm going to do is just use a small hammer and just gently tap that through. There we go. And that's pretty much done. Alright, um, now we want to set our float level. I've shown this in one of the um, other videos. So, we so we've gone and set the float to the correct level to match the other two carburetors. Um, the next thing we need to do before we install the top cover is just put this little plate in, like so. And now we can actually drop on the top cover. And we've got these five assembly screws that will just drop in like so. These ones are non, they're non-standard but the customer preferred the look. There's a nice gold sort of plated um, screw. The, the head is the same as a genuine um, item. We can use those. Okay so that top cover's been all tightened down now. We'll go ahead and turn the carburetor over and we've got here our bottom cover gasket and our um, bottom cover so we'll just go ahead and line those up like so. And once again, we'll drop in our start one thread just so it doesn't move and the gasket doesn't fall out of place. And we'll go ahead and drop in our four screws. So with our bottom cover installed, uh, we'll just go ahead and turn over and we have a little inspection plate that goes here. There's also a gasket. We can just push that gasket down into that little void tight little fit. Plate goes in like so. Then we use our two countersunk screws and simply bolts do those up. While we've got the carburetor in this orientation we may as well put on our choke assembly. We can see here, or the choke cover as it's called, see here these little prongs that stick out? They actually sit in the grooves inside these plungers the starter plungers, and they move those up and down, releasing fuel in uh, for cold starts. So they find their own way sort of home. So all we need to do is there's little dowels on the actual cover. I can feel it's engaged. So all I need to do is have those screws already in place, one on either side. In fact, these screws are the original ones. Um, little trick is if you are getting things blasted, leave them in the body. They'll get blasted along with the rest of the body and um, keeps your, um, your thread holes nice and clean as well. So that's our choke assembly fitted. Um, we'll go ahead and insert our uh, main venturi now. Uh, because we've got our pump jets in, the slot's already there so it's easy to get that initial orientation. Same on the other side. Next will be our auxiliary venturi. Ensure that we do put them up the right way. I've seen them fitted um, the wrong way around in some cases and uh, they don't work very well. So we'll drop one in like so. The other side will go in like so. We can just line up those small indentations in those venturi. And what we do with those holes is we'll get, we've got a couple of um, new ones here of these lock washers and the actual locking um, screws for the Venturi. So we can actually just go ahead and thread those in. That's what we normally need to bend them around just for the first time we use them. 
You don't necessarily have to use these lock washers. If you've got uh, lock wiring tools, you can always use those because these screws um, actually do have um, holes already pre-drilled. So that's that side. We'll go ahead and we'll do the same on the other side and we'll tighten it all up. Now I've gone ahead and tightened up all these grub screws using an eight mil spanner. It's um, pretty important not to over tighten our auxiliary venturi screws. What they're gonna, that's, that's gonna do is distort the shape and it'll just make them hard to remove in the future. On the contrary, don't go too loose because uh, we don't want those spinning around because at high RPM, if one of those spin around, that's essentially cutting all fuel to that um, cylinder and um, we're gonna have some detonation problems, I imagine. Let's go ahead and get some pliers here and we just wanna bend over those tabs now lock on the lock washers and that's just going to stop these retaining screws from uh, unwinding. There we go. So that's those done. Um, on the top now, just go ahead. We've got a couple of new um, mixture screws and springs. So they can go in on either side. Now, the other two I've just set up as a base setting of um, one and three quarter turns out. So we'll just go ahead and do that for this one as well. So it's slightly seated. So half one, one and a half, one and three quarters. And we'll do the same on this side. Seated one, one and a half, and three quarters. Next, uh, don't want to forget our idle speed screw. We'll just put it on this side. The customer hasn't actually requested any particular linkages. So we're just gonna put it on that side for now and they can um, sort that out later on. Um, top cover and top cover gasket, or a jet inspection cover. Simply goes on like so. Gotta find the thread sometimes when they're new. There we go. Next we'll do is put our little streamer filter in the top there. Next we grab our brass top cover. Sometimes these little gaskets are a little stiff so we need to actually turn them on with the threads of the cover. And we'll see there it's going on. It is a tight one, there we go. Now it's passed and that's fine. So we wanna put that on and we'll tighten that one up as well in a moment. So we've got that. Next is we have our original brass fitting here. We're actually gonna be running the other two carburetors have got a T, the third's gonna have an elbow. So with those, we'll grab our little gaskets. The narrow one goes to the outside like so. We'll put our fitting in, and then the third one will go on. That's that, and we can tighten that up in whatever orientation we like. Um, finally, just for now, on the other end, we're gonna put on a just a blanking washer and some spindle lock tabs and new nuts. So there we have our completely assembled 45 DCOE carburetor. And the only thing we, we haven't put on yet are the ram tubes or air horns and our um, throttle lever on the side. Um, just to ensure that uh, we did it properly, no parts left over, very important. Um, so yeah, hope you've enjoyed the video.